history of the country we now know as Iraq has been written in blood. But this rich land, graced by two great rivers, is also the place where human civilization first began. Complex and sophisticated societies developed here, ruled by kings who led the world's first armies. Their cities and empires, the earliest on earth, emerged, blossomed, and collapsed through war, invasion, and conquest. That is one age of terror that you don't want to live through. Through the centuries, this hothouse of wealth, power, learning, and progress has also been subject to constant violence from foreign invaders. They turned around and basically butchered the chariot crews with uh, spears and axes from behind. In modern times, Iraq became a victim of European imperialism. And more recently, a target of American foreign policy. This truly must be one of the most horrendous oppressive regimes in history, even compared with the fascists of Europe. From Sargon the Great to Saddam Hussein, this is the story of the kings from Babylon to Baghdad. Mesopotamia, the Greek name for ancient Iraq, means the land between the rivers. The rivers in question are the Tigris and the Euphrates. The Mesopotamian plain, part of the fertile crescent, was the perfect environment for civilization to flourish. Abundant water allowed an advanced tribal culture to develop long before Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Flint tools easily worked the rich soil, producing grass for sheep and goats and fields for barley. Nomadic tribes grew into settled communities, and their settlements grew into towns. By 3500 BC, the world's very first cities, Uruk and Ur, rose to civic splendor in southern Mesopotamia, a region known to archaeologists as Sumer. It's the place that saw the development for the first time on the planet Earth of virtually all of those social and political and technological things that we associate with civilized life. The world's earliest writing systems developed in Mesopotamia. The world's first kings. The invention of the wheel the invention of the plow, the development of the state as a way of organizing political life. By 2900 BC, Mesopotamia was a patchwork of 30 or so individual self-governing city-states. Each had its own king with a nobility and bureaucracy its own patron god or goddess served by a hierarchical priesthood and a surrounding area of agricultural land growing dates, cereals, fruits and vegetables. Rival cities forged alliances to strengthen their individual independent status or to conquer their neighbors. Distances between these cities were actually quite small and because the irrigation land was so valuable, these cities were constantly at war with one another for the smallest of advantages. By 2334 BC, one king had grown in stature to dominate all Mesopotamia, Sargon the Great, king of the Semitic Akkadians. As far as we know, there are no images of Sargon that survive. We can guess what he would have looked like. He would have looked, uh, at least in his portraits, the way that Mesopotamian kings tended to look, which was uh, powerful, strong. The old form of Sargon's name, Sharukin, means legitimate, a strong hint, according to scholars, that he wasn't. In a legend about his origins, reminiscent of the story of Moses, Sargon was described as the bastard son of a priestess. So she put him in a basket after he was born and floated him in the river 
and the basket then was discovered by a gardener who raised him and then he went into the service of the king of Kish. Enterprising, ambitious, and ruthless, Sargon overthrew King Zababa of Kish and declared himself the city-state's new ruler. He reigned from Agade, the capital city he built north of Sumer in the state of Akkad, although its precise location has never been found. Sargon then started to take over southern Mesopotamia. His first conquest was the city of Uruk, where he captured and then humiliated the king Lugal Zagisi by dragging him into captivity on a leash. Within a short time, Sargon was master of all the land as far south as the Persian Gulf. And then after he conquered Uruk, he conquered other southern Mesopotamian cities, and then he seems to have thought, for whatever reason, I can keep going. He wasn't content simply as the earlier Sumerian kings had been to, to fight local battles. He wanted to take over what was then the known world. Remarkably, he did exactly that. Over his 56-year reign, Sargon conquered northern Mesopotamia, northern Syria, and eventually reached the Mediterranean to capture what is now southeast Turkey. Sargon created the world's first empire. It's the first king in the world to decide to take over lands that were occupied by people of different nationalities, different languages, different gods. And he was somebody that Mesopotamian kings from that time on was looked up to. He was the king that really set the ground rules for what it was to be an emperor. Sargon's empire was unique in its size and composition and its sophisticated administration. He tried to unify this vast area and reorganize it in a way that it had never been done before. Every city in Mesopotamia had its own system of weights and measures. Sargon standardized weights and measures throughout the whole area he had conquered. And by doing that, he made it possible to have um, trade over vast distances. Sargon was an expert military strategist who regarded warfare as the supreme instrument of power. He was the first ruler to maintain a standing army. Men drafted from all cities in the empire made up a huge force of 5,400 men. Such an army was expensive. So Sargon instituted an effective way to feed his troops. Requisitioning, a military euphemism for plunder. They fed themselves, the army, uh, from the land there so that the campaigns were more or less set to go at the point when the harvest was completed throughout Mesopotamia. That is one age of terror that you don't want to live through. Being outside of Akkad and not a member of that inner elite and knowing that every year you are going to be faced with this kind of slaughter. Sargon reigned until his death in 2279 BC. His dynasty continued to rule for a further 82 years. Yet, as impressive as the Akkadian Empire was, it also proved vulnerable to outside attack. In 2197 BC, the kingdom fell to raiders from the Zagros Mountains in Persia. A new king called Hammurabi would soon emerge. Taking Sargon the Great as his role model, he would construct a city that would become a legend in world history. And all of a sudden he's turning up on the borders with his army ready to, to fight. In 2197 BC, chaos followed the fall of the Akkadian Empire that originated with King Sargon the Great. Asiatic tribesmen invaded from highland strongholds in the west. Total anarchy all but destroyed a civilization nurtured over centuries. Finally, in 2112, the kings of Ur restored some semblance of stability. Then, a new threat appeared from the northwest. 
a wild nomadic people called Amorites descended to terrify the settled farmers of Mesopotamia. They saw the Amorites as barbarians. There are descriptions of them. These are people who um, don't farm. They don't live in houses. They live in tents. They don't bury their dead on the day that they die. They don't cook their meat. But after the initial turmoil caused by sudden immigration, the seasons and patterns of agricultural life in the flatlands began to work their calming magic. By 1900 BC, the Amorites had been completely